Welcome to a super melancholy episode of Dad's Rules with Kevin Belzer. And today we have our special guest star, Melissa Belzer. You know, normally we record these. I'm in a great mood. It's true. The world is wonderful. I'm not used to getting phone calls that ate something at night of someone basically accusing me of ripping them off and not yeah. being worth what I did. It's just been one of those evenings. A soul squeezer. I seem to recall myself pulling weeds out of their yard yesterday. That yard? Uh-huh. Oh, no. No, not not oh, different yes, one. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that tells you how many oh, times I end okay. up doing that. <laughs> so it's two houses this week we've done weeds. Yeah. In the last week. Yeah, scheduling <sighs> crews to do paint, carpet, AC work, garage door repair, all that fun stuff. Get it all taken care of, calling to tons of favors, get deals on stuff, and then be told that I'm ripping them off and being very unprofessional. I don't understand that. Maybe she's just having a bad day. I don't know. That seems inconceivable to me. Some people are just ungrateful. I guess. It's, all it's I unfortunate. Figure. You do a lot for everybody. It's very ridiculously unfortunate indeed. Yes. That doesn't stop you from being you. You still do you. So. I'll still be doing it for probably the next client and the client uh, after that. You and all will. That. You get you're awesome. one idiot out of every hundred or so. Well, they're ungrateful. They're ungrateful. You can't change that. You just what do I say? Do you usually get one one crazy a year. Mm. Yeah, one crazy Maybe. a year. Maybe. Every six months. Yeah, so 16 years, I've had 16 crazies. Maybe. That's not too bad of a ratio, I guess. Maybe it's once. Maybe twice a year. Uh, maybe. Yeah, but then it'll fool you and it'll skip a year. Yeah, that's true. That's true, I suppose. So we'll skip the one year and then the next year you get two. Yeah, that's probably true. As long as they're not back to back. Yeah. It makes it a little rough. Anywho, in your business world, you did a live in-person event last weekend. So I know that that was different yeah. for you, an expansion of your business. What were some takeaways from you out of that? Um, well, I knew I just had to do it. I, did, I was like, I thought I was going to throw up like an hour. I was like, not actually, but I was like, I felt really like, ugh. And I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm like, I was like worrying. I was never going to back out. I was never going to not do it. But I was like, okay, I don't know what I don't know. So I figured I'll just, I'll just do it. It was a, it was a no charge event. All I do is put together a gift basket. So that was, that was easy. Cause I love that. And they actually, they loved my gift basket. So that's cool. I mean, there were lots of great gift baskets. I mean, they were even next level for mine, but mine for, they just gave a price range. And then I was like, I found it next time. Maybe I don't need to limit. Cause some of those other ones I saw, I was like, no way. I could have done so much more, but it just going through it. And I always like to talk to people. Talking to people is fun, especially about something that I love. So that's easy to do. That part didn't worry me. I was just worried like, oh, how's this going to work? Or, <laughs> and I had my friend Jenny helping me. She's so awesome. So it was great having a helper. And I think for me, maybe unless I get the hang of it, I don't know. I haven't had conversations, a debriefing or, you know, that's what I was calling it with, um, my upland or whatever I haven't had a talk with them to see how they do it solo or if they do it solo I was like I couldn't imagine doing one solo especially if it was more or a bigger event so I learned that I have a lot to learn and that's fine because I knew I didn't know what I needed to do so now I kind of have an idea of what I need to bring what I want to do and I'll just the talking parts easy maybe just even learn some more facts that I can give because some people were kind of um, intrigued what was the story you told yourself going into the event that was completely different from when you got there? The story that I told myself and then it ended up being different? Yeah, because like I'll get notes on an appointment that I'm going to and think that the appointment's going to go one direction and ends up going usually a completely different direction from what the notes say. Was there something you were going into it that you thought it would play out one way and it played out a different way? Um, I think thought I think I thought it would be a lot more people going through there I mean she she gave me a number and somehow I was like well, that's a good amount of people and you know and then I, and then what yeah what I didn't know was that oh like other people were going to come in too so I don't know if it was family members as well or friends I don't really know what the scope but 
it was cool because there were kids there, there were some kids there too. So I had a couple of um, like teen girls come up to the booth too. So I was like, oh, that was somehow it was unexpected. And then it turns out, yes, I actually have a future opportunity, which I did not know. So I did not know this was a twice a year event. So I told her I would love to be invited back for the fall. And it seemed like she was open to that. So we'll be talking to her. And then there's another opportunity because I like that the, the retirement community folks, ladies, dudes too. Uh, they're, just a they're just really fun to be around sometimes and they just have the greatest stories. But so there's an opportunity just because I'm, you know, what I like to do. I'm like, you know, there are some, there's one woman, she wouldn't come out of her room. She, she didn't really... I think she felt bad about not being able to get around or whatever. Or she was worried about being around a lot of people or something. And I'm like, well, I can wait here afterwards. I don't think she ended up coming out, but her daughter ended up coming out and just talking to me. I'm like, yeah, I would love to. So then I had this idea. Well, maybe I should arrange to come back and see. Maybe there's some other women who are like her. And I like if I just told her if she'd cover the, you know, if they would do the, do the same amount that I was charging at the event. So if you just cover that cost, I can come in and put the nail strips on them. And she was like, that would be a great idea. So it was like a whole opportunity I didn't even imagine that I'm going to get to do. So I'm kind of excited to see what that looks like because it was unexpected. And it's, it appeals to my <laughs> nature of loving to give to people. So it's just like, it's like a whole package deal that just when I was done, I was like, <laughs> I don't know, I just felt really good when I was done. Way better than when I started. So doing a live event was out of your comfort zone going into it. Because I didn't have knowledge. Correct. Yeah. yeah, but I did it. And even my one, my one upline, she's like, you know what? The people that succeed are people like you that just do it even when they don't feel like it or don't think they can do it. I'm like, I, I was like, I had no expectation. I could sell nothing, but at least I wanted to know and see what it was like. So I didn't really have an expectation of, oh, I'm going to sell everything I have. No, I just kind of was like, let's just do this and see what this looks like. So yeah, I knew it would be learning. Yeah. Business doesn't just come to you. No. You have to go get no. the business. No. There are exceptions to the rules. <laughs> That's I true. I have had people wander into the real estate office back when I had an office. That's true. The very first deal I ever did. That's oh, how that it is happened. right. I forgot. That's yeah. Right. So this doesn't happen. Oh my gosh! Francisco walks into the office, <laughs> and I go to do a VIP presentation. I'm new agent. This is going to be my first deal ever <laughs> if he actually buys anything. And he goes, "No, no, I already have the house picked out." I'm like, okay. And he gives me the address. He goes, your guys' sign is in the yard. And I'm like, I, I look it up. It's, <laughs> like not, it's not our listing. Though. Oh, oh, no, I didn't know that. It's not our listing, oh. but somehow our sign is in the yard. <gasps> That's kind of a red flag, but I think the time has passed by now. Oh, and plus yeah. it was four companies ago. That's fine. So I, I go show him the home. He likes it, writes on it. What was so funny about it is that I get there and sure enough, our sign is in the yard. It's listed by another agent. Well, our sign, when it foreclosed, our sign was never taken down. <gasps> oh. The bank that now owned it never put a sign up. Wow. So it was our sign in the yard. So the only reason I got the business is because our sign in the yard. Very nice. And he just wandered in. They said, they told him, I don't think they believed him that he was wanting to buy a home or whatever, because they kind of blew him off on the phone in the office that routed appointments to us. Mm. Just said, well, here's their address. Just show up there. So he drove 10, 10 miles down the road to our office oh, wow. and just, and we were on the up flo upper floor, like third or fourth floor. He just wanders into our office and wants to buy this house. Interesting. Now I did do a good job for him. I got him a new roof, a, uh, let's see, new roof, pool redone, and the exterior of the house repainted on a bank owned home. Got him all his closing costs oh, wow. covered as well. And the home was only $96,000. Oh, wow. Back in the day. <laughs> Four bedroom home with a basement. Oh my god! And a pool for ninety six thousand dollars in Phoenix. Unreal. Yeah, that's unreal. Yeah, and the area of town it's in probably would sell for four fifty, no. maybe five hundred at the most, but probably four fifty ish. Okay, would sell for now, but still, still, that's, that's in, a lot. in thirteen, fourteen years to go from ninety six thousand to four fifty, I'd I'd take that rate of return. Uh, yeah, yeah. So 
hands down. That is the exception to the rule. It happened to me one other time, but For sure. you go, okay, twice <laughs> like, in come on. 16 years. <laughs> yeah. If you want to be successful in sales, you are going to have to get off your butt and go work for it. You're going to have to pick up the phone. It's learn. Dial. Learn and do. Yeah, learn, uh, learn scripting and word tracks and all that fun stuff. If you're going to want to have any success whatsoever. Yeah. So are you planning on doing more of these in the future? Well, I've got the fall one planned for I mean, that's my plan, so I just have to get with the event coordinator. She seemed willing to have me do it, so. You almost said the scam one, too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> that was a close call. That was it, something it, else. It was a close call, but I think I said to you, <sighs> nobody needs payment at no. 9 p.m. at night. And that's what that I said. urgently. I was like, he's just totally bugging. I'm like, this isn't real. Nobody, yeah. like, literally no one will do that. If anybody's hitting you up every three minutes trying to see if you <sighs> send money. Like, go it's away. It's not for real. Tried to, they tried to FaceTime or like messenger call me one time. I was like, cancel, <laughs> close off, whatever. Yeah, that's a, that's a <laughs> definite no go on that. So I haven't blocked him yet. Cause I was waiting. I, I had never heard from the admin. So I'm wondering if he cloned, cause I can't find the post now. I took a screenshot of it luckily then, but I was going to reach out to another admin. Cause I'm like, something's weird with this. So I kept all those things and whatnot. It's weird. Yeah, so we're going to triple verify yes. in the future. But it was funny. So it was funny in hindsight. Right, right, right. Well, I didn't do anything. Well, on the I... post, you had all these people going, it's not a scam. It's not a scam. Oh, and then yeah. you go into the profile yeah. and they've got like three pictures or whatever. Yeah, each one of those was like, no, it's fine. It's good. And I, every single one of them had just a couple of pictures and a handful. And I started kind of scrutinizing. And the main post was like, oh, Okay, all these pictures are from the angle of a spectator, if you really look at it. And it's like, mmm, that's not cool. Sure, scammy McScammerton. Yes, exactly. I'll send you some PayPal money. Give me some PayPal Monopoly money. So, yeah, I was like, whew, I'm glad. I'm Well, I think the only reason I had the red flag was because he started hounding me. That's what made me scrutinize. So, he messed up. Maybe he's an amateur. Because <laughs> I was like, wait a second. This is some, something's wrong. Something's up. So I almost sent the money because I was like, cool, you know, it seemed legit. Yeah, be careful. Be careful out there. Now, to me, the money sounded too cheap for what it was. Well, and I, did, I didn't know because I haven't done any events. So now that I know that, I'm going to be I'm gonna be asking people, does this seem reasonable? Does this seem... I, read, I talked to somebody that does a lot of events the next day, and they're like, I would have bought four tables for that amount. <laughs> Well, and well, and because I already had this first one done, they didn't charge a fee, probably because it was a retirement committee, but all I had to do was make the gift basket as the fee. She was like, you just make a gift basket for the raffle and mm -hmm. it raises money for their activities. I was like, that seemed reasonable. And she was communicating with me, not in a menacing way. So I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, but outside of that, I mean, you can now look at other festivals, events that are going on. You yeah. can get on those radars. I've been hounded for a while saying that I need to be hosting events for past clients and stuff like that. I'll get right on that when I figure out what moment in my life is free to fill that in. Yeah, well. I'm not opposed to doing it. No, that's it's just gonna take some time. Yeah. Something I don't we'll really find. have. Yeah, we'll as micromanaged as I am, it might just be right now. It might just be almost there. We're probably almost there. That brings us full circle to why I'm probably <laughs> so pissed right now about how this client is treating me because I'm like, I gave you my time, my most valuable asset yeah. in the world, net you what I told you net, and you're, now you're throwing a hissy fit. And I'm not even oh, like charging oh any kind of crazy money, nothing. Wow. It's just normal and then repairs came up that she agreed to do and she agreed to the cost of everything and kind of I wonder is. what derailed in her brain in her thinking I That's weird. have no idea that seems weird to me maybe by the next time we do the next episode hey, the we'll answer. know better <laughs> so if you like this episode like share review leave fat fa fat back ooh, ooh, ooh. leave fat back <laughs> old kevin could have left something. you fat back Old Kevin was round. Mm. That was a shape. Yeah. He had fat back. 
So Stop. instead, leave feedback. Yeah, so those of you listening and not watching on YouTube, I was nodding my head. Yeah. <laughs> Hit dadsrealswag.com for all your swag. Mm -hmm. And until next time, go out and be the kick-ass adult I know you all can be.